Welcome, welcome to the Ethan and Elvin Show. I'm your host, Ethan Zoner. I'm here with Elvin Mims. What's going on here? Nothing much. Just sitting here chilling. I'm feeling real too casey. Uh oh. Still feeling too casey. Jeepers. What's your team now? You like the Spurs, don't you? I don't know, man. I'm just I'm experimenting still. <clears throat> so. I do like the, uh, on. you're right, though, on 2K, I do like their all time teams. I'm a big fan of that right now. I haven't really explored the game too much otherwise this year. But it's, as I'm too busy looking at these all-time teams, the Clippers team surprises me a lot with Bob McAdoo. Anyways, it's episode 42. It's a Thoughties Day. And we're based out of London, Ontario, Canada. All right, I got that out of the way, Elvin. Okay, so the Celtics lost for 16. Or they won 16 games in a row. But then they lost to the Heat, Elvin. Yeah, we both were wrong. Yeah, I thought I they were going to see that one coming, man. Yeah, that's fair, though. The Heat have a good matchup against them. You know, white side, you got James Johnson. Gordon Drogic is a good point guard, too. Yeah. Justice Winslow's not too bad. So they have the pieces to match up well. Kyrie Irving, though, this is something that kind of was interesting to me. He was saying it was time for the Celtics to lose. Now, who was that? Kyrie Irving. Okay. I take from that basically, like, because the team's not going to win every bloody game. They're really not. That would be pretty cool if they did. But they're not going to win the remaining of the games and only lose and win 80 games straight. Um, what I'm wondering is, was it their time to lose or does it really matter at this point? Because they, they're establishing themselves as the first place team in the Eastern Conference. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm just curious. Why was he? Why would he say it's time for them to lose? I don't know. That's kind of... I, mean, so I don't know. Maybe at that point, yeah, they probably need to get another fire because i mean you really never know in the locker room you could have probably started to see you know people being a little lackadaisical not looking uh, as hungry not feeling as hungry so you know maybe feel take, yeah, maybe they're feeling like they supposed to just go out and win every game so some of the rookies are second and third year guys needing a bit yeah, of a so humbling maybe, experience yeah, so maybe you know they take a loss or whatnot and you know that bring everybody back down to earth and just kind of rebuild from there so some guys were probably thinking, we're going to win eight games in a row. We're not. Yeah. We're only going to lose two games. We're just games. thinking they just got to show up. You know, so we're just showing oh. up and we're going to win kind of thing. You know, not the True. fact that we'll win 82 games. But, I mean, I don't care. Like, whatever sport you were playing, you know, you win 16 games in a row. Like, if you're not a true down hard, like, professional and, like, gritty and just have love for the game like that, like, your arrogance to kick in mm. and kind of, you know, cloud the big picture or whatnot. So, Maybe taking the loss, just let them. Because you, you, 16 games, you'll you start feeling like you can't be beat, especially when you've beat the teams that you have beat, right? you start feeling like we can't be beat, but I can just show up and we're going to show up and get it done. So, um, you know, taking that loss or whatnot, you know, probably just brings them back down and everything goes from there. Jeez. Um, sorry about that. <laughs> I agree with you there. I didn't even think about that, actually. That's a good point, how some of the players just might be um, going through the motions, so to say. You're just go, oh, okay, we just show up saying we're going to win this game, and we're not going to have to compete too hard, and if we just go and give about 70%, that's all we're going to have to do. And no, you have to give 100% every night. I like that. Yeah. So. Elvin. Ethan. Remember when I said how long are the Cleveland Cavaliers going to stay ninth in the Eastern Conference? <laughs> I think I, I do remember that. I think what did I tell you? Like was, a week or two ago? Yeah, what did I tell you it was going? I said, man, look, they, this is the NBA, and they in the East. I said they must run run off four or five games. <laughs> They'll be in the top five easily, yeah. man. Like man, just, as I was typing the script up, I was <laughs> telling Elvin. I just happened to check quickly because I saw they won. They beat the Brooklyn Nets last night, one sixteen one oh nine. They're fourth in the Eastern Conference. Like, I mean, you're right. All they had to do is just string together a couple of games, yeah. um, and that's all they need. So, anyways, they won. They beat the Brooklyn Nets. And what impressed me the most was their <clears throat> LeBron James killed it, obviously. He can't be stopped almost, but as soon as he wants to turn it on, nobody can take his game away. Um, He finished with... A pretty good stat line there, Elvin. He finished with 33, 6, and 5. 11 of 17, 7 of 9 from the free throw line. 4 of 7 from 3, which is pretty yeah. good for him. He doesn't shoot too many of those. Yeah. I got to go check this one player out, though, Elvin. I have to. I have to check this player out just for the sake of argument. You know who's been doing really well this year, and I'm actually getting kind of upset. Not really upset. Why are you upset? Damari Carroll. 
Yeah. Because he's playing well. It's the system, dude. Like, it is the system. Yeah, see, I keep telling him players, like, I mean. He was right. Like, he was right. No. Yeah, I mean, because he was, like, they was expecting him to just clamp down and knock down all these wide open threes. So, basically, what they was wanting him to be is what they tr- – Getting out of CJ Miles right now, right? Exactly. That's what they wanted to want. That's not Demar Kell's game. Like, no, it's absolutely not his game. And everything in between, it was all through DeRozan, and Lyra, and Valentin. Yep. That's what they were trying to force it through, right? So it's like kicking the ball with a couple seconds left, hurl up a tray so they're gonna get a shot clock violation and all that stuff. So. Yeah, and he's right. He's right. He's right. He's right. You know who's finding themselves in a really interesting role? And for the longest time, I wasn't not a fan of his game. I just was kind of disappointed in his game. Rondé Hollis Jefferson. They found his position. He's a power forward. Okay. He's, a, he's a bit of an undersized power forward. He's like 6'7", mm-hmm. but he's very athletic. And right now it works. He had 20 points last night. He's killing it, Elvin. He's averaging around 15 points a game. He's averaging, actually, to be exact, 14.6, which is career highs for him. He's averaging career high in rebounds, too, which is seven. He's just fitting the role well in this new NBA, I guess you could say, in this undersized four kind of thing where they have Mozgov and him as the five and the four. The Nets don't win very many games, but it's still impressive to see him finding his niche, so to say, because... Could have been almost on his way to play out of the league, or he just maybe it was the system for him too because they were trying him as a small forward. Yeah, and that just wasn't working. That wasn't his thing. Yeah, so I mean that's good for him though, man. Yeah, but anyways, back to the Cleveland Cavaliers for a second there. Um, they're fourth in the Eastern Conference, and yeah, their last um ten games. Let's see what they've been doing here. Their last ten games, Elvin, they're eight and two. <laughs> So you're right. All they had to do was put together a solid 10-game stretch. And they're back in the hunt. And the next thing you know, everyone's... Because now who is it? It's Boston. Detroit. Detroit. and then Toronto. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We're it's moving up, Elvin. narrow margin. Not by a narrow margin. We have a higher winning percentage what right is, now. So what are y'all record? 11 and 6. Okay. And Cleveland's? 11 and 7. Oh, okay. Could have easily been 12 and 6. Okay. Like, it could have been twelve and six, but you but you let people go on a twenty eight. <sighs> yeah, we're gonna get we we will get to that. That is a very disappointing night for the Raptors last night. But anyways, um, here's something that was impressing me actually. The Knicks, the Knicks are ten and seven. Yeah, Tim Hardaway Jr. is playing very very well. I guess we'll just get to the Raptors news right now. We might as well. They lost to the Knicks last night, one hundred eight, one hundred nine, or sorry, one hundred to one hundred eight. Jeepers creepers. Elvin, how many how many points did the Knicks score in the in the third quarter? In the third? Yeah. I don't know. I think it was like said like forty one. It was forty one of them. Yep. And do you know on how many points were scored in a twenty eight oh run to get to forty one? I'll tell you, it was twenty eight. The Knicks went on a twenty eight oh run to start the third quarter. <sighs> The Raptors scored 10 points the whole third quarter. To say that they didn't know what the heck they were doing on offense or defense that quarter, I don't even know. Um, Apparently, Jeff Hornacek laid into his players, so I guess that worked for him. He had some film rolled up. That's one thing I like about the NBA today. I will admit with the technology that they have, the ability to already have film being able to be broken down right then and there at halftime and there's no delay. It's like pretty instantaneous and they're able to exceed the problems they needed to fix and quite frankly really fix them. Yeah. Elvin, 28-0 run. Jeez, creepers. 28-0. But the thing about it, why didn't the Raptors fix that problem? That was going to be like, my I'm next question. I'm just trying to find out. Like I've, I've played ball mm-hmm. for years and I have yet to find out how a team can go on a 28 to nothing run. That was going to be my next I don't question. Get, it, 28 to 2, 28 to 4, 28 to nothing. Like, At what point do you call a timeout and stop that run? Isn't it that 10 like points when they're 10 0 run? And you're it depends like, okay. on the vibe that's happening, too, right? Yeah. It depends on the atmosphere. It all depends on that. You know, like, you know, if they're coming down and they scoring effortless and it's like a, you know, quick 8 0 run, you get a timeout and try to figure this thing out. But. Especially when you got. Chris Tapps, Porzingis dropping 22 points and 12 boards, and you got Tim Hardaway Jr. getting 38 points, 6 boards, 7 assists. Pretty solid nights for them. And then Ennis Cantor coming in with 11 as well, and then Courtney Lee with 15. <sighs> Kyle Lowry had a pretty good game. He had 25 and 10, 10 rebounds, which good for him, I guess. 
nobody else really had a good night. I I just like you said, Elvin, when it's twenty eight to overrun, when you see that written down afterwards, that's the first thing that comes into your head is no timeouts. Yeah. No anything? Like what? Why didn't you just stop that? Like stop the bleeding. You have to stop the bleeding. I don't get it. <sighs> yeah, 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 yeah. How long till Dwayne Casey gets fired, Elvin? They're not gonna let him go, are they? They love him no, too they much. Love him, man. They like his answers in the press conference after the game. Like, how did that twenty eight roll <laughs> happen? Well they were scoring shots and we wasn't hitting anything. Uh <laughs> We just you didn't know, score, and they got 28 points. At the end of the us. game, they had more points than us, so that obviously make them the winner. We got to go back to the drawing board. You're like, man. <laughs> I think at that point, uh-huh. I just hit pause. I just stopped recording. I was like, you know what? All right, man. I think we can fill it in from here there, yeah. Dwayne. Thanks, bud. Um, <laughs> Kawhi Leonard isn't going to be back for a while, they're saying. Um, he's going to be back. They're saying maybe January, from what I was reading into it. It's going to be a, the unforeseen future. Even though Tony Parker, who has the same injury, people are saying they have a very similar injury. Yeah, well, Parker ruptured his. Like, he tore his, right? Yeah. I, like, I don't like when to call. Because he, like, he went out in the playoffs with the ankle. So, like, you never heard nothing about this injury. I never heard anything about him until... Greg Popovich apparently said he's never seen anything like it before. I don't know know how many quad injuries he's seen, but people are, like, I was reading an article on the score. They're comparing injuries between the reason why Kawhi Leonard's is more severe. Apparently, he might have some nerve damage. They can't figure it out. There must be some shooting pain still in his leg when he's trying to walk or what have you. Because there's some people going, well, Tony Parker hurt his quad, and he is 35 years old. Why is he back? It just all depends on your injuries and how it's healing. Just yeah. There's setbacks all the time. The thing that's impressing me, though, is like guys like Deontay Murray, Danny Green, Bryn Forbes, all these young guys. Danny Green's a little bit older, but all these guys that are, quote-unquote, a little unproven, that are still doing very well for this team and... Like I said, ESPN thought the Spurs were only going to win 34 games this year, and they're still doing very well. Like, I don't know. I still see them being in the playoff contention. I still see them. I don't know if they'll be able to win a championship this year. They're fourth in the Western Conference. They're 11-7. and They're holding the line pretty good. They don't have their best player right now. They don't have their best point guard, uh, Tony Parker. Patty Mills is stepping his game up, too, in the meantime. Yeah, I just never think you can count out. Moral of the story is don't count out Greg Popovich. As soon as Kawhi Leonard comes back, even if he's not 100%, watch out. Yeah. The other thing is for um, the Eastern Conference, Elvin, bringing it back there for a quick sec, is there any other teams that impress you in the Eastern Conference that might be able to dethrone Cleveland or might be able to dethrone Boston or Toronto? Besides Washington, you were, ta- you were talking about Charlotte. The uh, like how Dwight Howard's been impressing you. Yeah, mm-hmm. like Dwight Howard's been like he's been putting up decent numbers like the past three, four games. Nah, like, no one can count. Dude, I don't care what nobody say. Like you can say what you want to, man. I've seen where he's, where he was at, and then like what he went through for whatever reason. You know, different team, the back injury and all that. Like I actually like seeing him back to. 2020, seeing 2020 games from Dwight Howard. Yeah, 25 and 20. That was his yeah, first like, one with Charlotte. You know what I'm saying? Like, uh, I'm, you know, he's getting 25 points, you know, 16, 17 rebounds, four, five blocks. Like, I just, it feels good. Just, uh, I just like being able to just see him kind of go back into that form. Because to it's me, it was, well. cause to me, it was like more frustrating knowing like how he used to be, you know, and, you know, it just, pretty sure it was just as frustrating as him. Because, like, I mean, he had serious back injury, right? So, I mean, mm-hmm. you can't just, you know, and for him, it was probably just as frustrating, you know. like. And I like, think Houston was too fast of a style for him. Yeah, like Houston wanted to play a running. Uh, any team that want to do a running gun is not a team for a big guy like Dwight Howard. Not right, right now in his career. When no. he was younger, I'm sure Orlando Dwight Howard would have thrived there. But like you said, with his back injury yeah. and all that jarring, that's not necessarily the best pace yeah, for you him. You took like a younger Orlando Dwight Howard oh. and switched him with like a Clint Capella. Like Jesus they would, that would be crazy because you see how Capella just pick, roll, catch, lobs, boom. Like just Dwight Howard did it better. Yeah, so it's just hundred percent. Yeah, so 
and he's big and strong guy, Elvin, so he <laughs> would be finishing on guys no problem. Especially if he wasn't like if he was a lot healthier with today's NBA being seeing small forwards like Rondé Hollis Jefferson as a six seven small for or power forward, sorry. Mm-hmm. Guys like Draymond Green trying to play center, he would have been very interesting to go up and try to just jump right over them. But anyways, I got a question for you about Isaiah Thomas. He's nearing a comeback. Yeah. I'm reading he's doing five-on-five five drills. I'm reading he's starting to do contact drills. Now, what does that mean when he's starting to do contact that drills? That means he's actually going through practices now. He's coming off the of screens. So he's getting bumped. So like running he's, sets? He's, he's, yeah, he's running sets. It's like actual contact. They got people out there like literally bumping him his progression to the basket they're going against him. players now or not probably, yet not probably this when they say contact it's not like he's out there and just like working on like agility working on that kind of stuff he's actually he was doing know, that a few months ago handling the ball and he's you know they probably whether it be a coach or a shooting coach or something with a mat or something like that they're just bumping him and hitting him when he's going for moves like he is actually going like through game situations now man so fair enough because he's about four to six weeks away they're saying January 1st is his, is his time back, but he might be able to come back the last week of December. But anyways, I'm wondering, what can Cleveland expect from Isaiah Thomas? Is he going to be – he's not going to be 100%. No, if they expect him to come out and just be the the Isaiah, instant Isaiah Thomas that was in Boston then. Because I heard, I heard someone say 20 points a game is what he's going to get. Yeah, but he's got to get in his groove, right? Like, you got to understand, he's been to step on the court with a bunch of guys he's never played with before. He hasn't played mm-hmm. with LeBron. He hasn't played with Kevin Love. He hasn't played with Wade. He hasn't. So what he's going to do But what about this argument, Alvin? He's gotten to hang around the teams, though. He's yeah, there. Yeah, but he still hasn't touched the floor with him. So he's going to have to go out there and get a feel. Yeah, you can see how LeBron played, but you don't really get a feel for it till you're out there with him. You're having to make them passes to him. You're expecting them passes from him. Going through a practice that where, hard. Like yeah. when he dropped, well, I'm going to get this shot right here. You know, it's just different things. So, I mean, he's a professional to catch on quick. He will, you know, adapt and catch on quick to it. But, I mean, I, I think it will be unfair for them. I think he's just going to come out and just instantly go to drop in 20 a game. You know, if he do good. You know? I think 15 to 20 is Yeah, a, I think it's going to depend on his shot, though. It's going to depend on his shot because – um. It's gonna be. It's gonna depend on his shot because he's gonna get a lot of wide open looks. You know what I'm saying? LeBron would penetrate. And in the fourth quarter, like what's it gonna be like for him in the fourth quarter? Because everyone's wondering. There's some small-minded individuals that might be thinking, well, you know, he ran the fourth quarter for the Celtics with Brad Stevens, so he's gonna run the fourth quarter with the Cavaliers, right? right? And the thing about it, he possibly could. You know, just depending on how it's going. But like LeBron's said, no fool. Yeah. Yeah, but that, that shows the difference when people try to do the whole Kobe Jordan comparison to LeBron. I told you when when Jordan and Kobe crossed half court, they was trying to figure out how to score that thing and take your heart out. When LeBron crosses half court, he's figuring how to make the best basketball Who's open? What's play. the best option? You yeah. know, like yeah, in hindsight, yeah, if I get it and the clock is ticking down and I drive and two people collapse and Kyle Korver is wide open, I'm Why going to shoot pitch it, it yeah. to Kyle Korver. Like that's just what. But he takes a lot of unfair criticism. Having said that. When he's out there, like they both, they all know what, um, Who what goes Isaiah to Thomas first. can do in the fourth. So they they are aware that he's out there. But new team, new teammates, new system. His, his role is going to change. He's still going to get shots in the fourth quarter. Don't shot, worry. But to think that they're going to just say, "Give Isaiah Thomas the ball, and I want you to go to work in the fourth. Yeah, they don't have to do. Or that they're not going to sit him down and be like, "Well, you know, LeBron." Uh, he was like, hey, in the fourth corner with the Celtics, so yeah, he's so going to run the fourth corner for us. They're going to just come in and they're going to play ball. Right? They're gonna just, be it smart just so players, happened yes. that Isaiah Thomas was the guy on Boston's team. It worked so for him. It worked what, very well. Yeah, but it's it's, it's all going to change now. And I'm not even saying it's a bad thing. But sometimes it's, when, when, cha- thing, when yeah. change like that happens, people don't even realize it actually adds another year or two to some people's career. Because they're not excited too they're to not be there. That, yeah, they're not that hard on their body, right? Like mm-hmm. he's not having to come down and having to get points like that. You got three, yes. you know what I'm saying? You got three, you know, potential. He's never played where he has three all stars out there with him. He Plus can have Kyle Wade. Corver too he to can, be he open. He can yeah. have Wade. He can have LeBron, and he can have Kevin Love, right? So, um, yeah, he can um, have them all three of them. So, I mean, dude, like his role, like the the pressure on him is just like you know what? Let's just play. Now he just work. Let's play basketball. Right, that's yes, thing. yes, so. and if he's hot, if he is hot, he's hot. It works. Yeah. Like we've said, LeBron James is no fool. He's got, but don't forget the weapons and the options that are there. Yeah. You got Kevin Love. You got Dwayne Wade. You 
don't forget J.R. Smith. There's so many good, yeah. legitimate options out there. He still might be able to get his buckets. Don't worry. They're still going to be there. Yeah. The Cavaliers are definitely going to benefit from this in the long run. I guarantee oh, you. Yeah. By the time the playoff comes, it's going to be perfect. For them. Let's say the Cavaliers only hold it fourth, but they're they're going for second or first. Like it just they're not even trying to. It's just going to happen because they're all good basketball players. Yeah. And people are wondering, oh, what about Dwayne Wade? Is he going to start? When's he going to fall off? And the thing is, let's say Dwayne Wade does go down soon with an injury. I don't think he's going to, but let's knock on wood and say he does. Then Isaiah Thomas is in, is able to come in. There's so many options for this team. Once he gets there. But anyways, the Raptors are still fine, right, Elvin? The Raptors are still fine. Yeah, they're okay for right now. Yeah. yeah. They're okay, dude. Yeah. I keep telling you, man, it's, it's, it's teams that are breathing down their neck. It's something like you got, like I said, you got the young bucks. You still got Washington, who ain't really hit their groove yeah, but yet. Yeah, Thonmaker's 30. They haven't really hit their groove yet, so it don't really. It's, but anyways, I mean, the Kyle Lowry's 30 good. plus, and y'all still gave him 100 mil, so let's not talk <laughs> about age. <laughs> let's not talk let's not get to talk about age man uh, um okay I think I want to speak about age for a quick sec because I, I read something Elvin and it's resonating in my head and I, I gotta get it out of I gotta get it out I'm sorry I read an article and please please enlighten me like you did earlier as to why it might be a little false I read that Manu Bolt while he was at the University of Cleveland State he may or may not have had his numbers fudged a little. Now, I'm trying to understand what he means by that. There Apparently, he there's a former coach there. I'm just going to look him up in a quick sec. But in the meantime, they're saying he fudged his documentation so that, in his words, it was like, there's more opportunities at 19 compared to 35. So we had to lie and say that this seven foot seven giant was a young man and he was going to get a chance because he's from Sudan and he's a Sudanese citizen. Might have been easy to fudge the numbers, I guess. But you were saying a very good point, actually. And that was. What was that? No, I'm just saying like the dude was saying that when he signed in, in college that he was 35. Um, if, if. You, if you yeah, if you get a chance to like a quick second to look that up, how long did Manute Ball play in college before he went pro? How many years did he do in college? Um, one second here, I'm trying to find. This yeah, because it's, it's like I say, man. I mean, if if he want to come out and say that, like you can't come out and try to say, oh well, we didn't know how he was. He was thirty five. Like, well, that's very contradicting, man. I didn't know how he, how old he was. Now, if he say I don't know how old he was, but I I would I would guess that he was about 35 okay that's still a little far-fetched but you know that's okay that's your opinion but we don't know how old he was i'm gonna say you know or he was this age you know it's, it's ridiculous man so you know if you okay 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 so it was the 80s there was a lot of things going on there the dude's name was kevin Mackey, and he claims that that's what he says he's saying that yeah if you want to read it quick no, Basically, just, just how many years did Manu? How many? How oh, I'm not too sure to be honest with you. Yeah, but so, I'll look that up quickly. Um, what I am interested is because it says he could have been by the time he was done retiring in the NBA, he could have been around forty to fifty years old. And you said it perfectly. That's a big gap, though. Ten years, forty to fifty. Like, that and a fifty-year-old playing in the NBA. You know, oh, that's a that's a lot, man. That's a lot yeah. on the body. There's guys who are 37, 38 years old who are like, I don't, I don't know, man. You, I'm not going to be able to perform it the way I was when I was 28 to 33. And even if you said to them, oh, like use Dirk Nowitzki as an ex example. Say, hey, Dirk, we're going to lie and say, and we're going to fudge the numbers. So even on paper, it says you're 35 now. So you're going to have to play like you're 35. It's it's not going to be, it doesn't work that way. His body is still 40. His body is still aged differently just because everyone thinks and it says that he's a different age. Oh, because he's 35 now. It doesn't work. It doesn't work that way. I don't get it. I just don't understand. I don't know. I could see maybe if he was like 25, maybe 26. That's more reasonable. And they, you know, they but, shaved him up a little and they didn't have his 5 o'clock yeah, shadow showing right. or nothing. But. but let's say you take him in college and he's 35. And then he turns around and play two or three years. So that's going to put him at 37, 38. So NBA he player. He played one come, year. Play one year. So that puts him. He comes out at 36. 
You know, and then he goes to the NBA and he played like 10 seasons, right? At least 10 seasons. Uh, yeah. In the NBA. So you mean to tell me that this dude went through a college season at 35, got drafted at 36, played and 10 played years. 10 years from 36 to 46 in the NBA <sighs> where big man died. He was very good. And to run the floor like that, dude. I don't care what you say, dude. Like, ain't no 45-year-old He's man. He's an NBA defensive player of the year, too. <laughs> yeah, ain't nobody. Ain't no Which would have been an 86, so yeah. he would have been like 38 years old. I know. I'm sorry. He's not going to run the floor like that and be blocking He was shots the blocks leader in 1989, so that would have put him at uh, – 40, no. You just said, like. No, sorry. If he came out, let's say he was 25. Yeah, either way. Either way, go to, like, I think those numbers are very, very far-fetched. Like, right. I just don't see it. Like, the, the 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 amount of stress that you put on your body during a – think about it in a regular college season, which is, like, 30 games. In an like NBA season, which is 82 but what about because his career average is only two points per game and four rebounds and three point so three mean, blocks? So that means that his career average is like that because they put him in one spot on the floor and say, "All right, don't move." He just stay here. <laughs> he still had to run You're up and down that seven. floor. He still had to do training camps. He still had, to, you know, what I'm saying like, dude, that's a lot of that's a lot of wear and tear on your body, man. And there's no forty, no forty some year old man doing that stuff, man. But he didn't rebound a lot, Elvin, because he was he was one of the first guys that could actually shoot threes as a big man. Yeah, it was almost astounding. It was dude, weird. I don't think you're hearing what I'm saying. <laughs> it's like, dude, you still have to run up and down that floor. I know, I'm just going. And the thing for about it, though, you, now you out there and you having to chase down a dude that's twenty four, twenty five. You having to run now. He's rebounding the outlet and he's taking off down the court. You are gonna run behind him and catch him and stuff. But his career high is only three point nine yeah, points per game. I don't care. It doesn't matter, man. I just think that, I think dude, <laughs> I whoever agree. said that, I think they're just trying to get some kind of attention, you know, like and because it, it makes absolutely no sense at all. Like, yeah, I can understand what that's within, a lot of work. Which if it was within reason, if they said he came in and he had to be around twenty four, twenty five, like Thon so, Maker. So we just this and that. Then that's something completely different. But to say that we recruited and signed a guy in college and he was thirty five years old, <laughs> like, dude, come on, man. Like, that's a grown ass. I'm man. sorry, dude. It, I don't. I have yet to see a thirty five year old person that looked like they can pass exactly. as a college student. They you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, thirty five. If you look at people that might thirty five, be like, yo, you look twenty six, twenty seven. But to look at a 35-year-old person and say, a 35-year-old man anyways, and say, you know what, yeah, you could pass for an 18-year-old kid. Like, man, get out of here. Yeah. yeah, that's what I'm saying. Cause I told you before, man. You always told, did say Greg Oden. I, did, too, I, yeah. said, I did say that, man. I said that about Greg Oden. I said, man, I don't care okay what nobody say, man. Greg Oden is like, when he came out of college, he had to be almost 30. Dude, because his body just don't bounce back from shit like uh, like a th- that was like actually a good point year. though. That, that was like a that. very good point, dude. Like when you're 18, dude, you can roll an ankle, take a couple of days off, and you back in action, man. Greg Oden messed around. It. We did Greg the research. Oldham we looked up players with similar injuries to him, and like Westbrook had a very similar injury Blake to his. Griffin. Blake Griffin did it two years his in a row kneecap in his two rookie year and sat out his rookie year and came back the next year and got rookie of the year. You know what I'm saying? And then like, the next year he blew it. Didn't he? Yeah, didn't like he hurt it again. That stuff. But anyways, you have. Westbrook, who don't went under multiple surgeries on that one knee or whatnot, he back springing or whatnot. Yeah, but with Brandon Roy, it was different over here. He yeah, had our like friends showing us like, different pictures of yeah, injury. Yeah, like, but, but with Brandon Roy, he had he like meniscus knee. damage, man. And he, he couldn't. He had like. And instead, but when they do that meniscus damage, when they do the what's the name, they have two options, and your recovery time is different. So they have one where they can go in and they can actually stitch it and stuff. And when they stitch it, it takes longer recovery, but it it lasts longer or they can go in and they can completely they can snip it but once they snip it then it's gone right they just cut it off and they're gone and they let that other part heal up or whatnot what what happens is it get closer to bone on bone so his was just bone on bone i don't know what's going on with greg Oden. like greg Oden messed around and bump his head in the shower he's out for two seasons like i don't know how that even happened man but it's just like um i would say greg Oden had to be older man i'm sorry i ain't never seen him <laughs> I ain't never seen a dude come out of college and look like he he look like he guys in the league dad, man. <laughs> like for real. He's like, man, I couldn't have been in the league, man. If I'd have been in the league and we played Greg Oden, I'd have been like, yo, like who got pops? Uh, man, who got dad out there? <laughs> Somebody pick dad up on the wing right now. But nah, but you hear it a lot though. Even if you ever get a chance, like check into like the little league world series. Cause when there they, was a guy, yeah. When yeah, they, yeah, they had yeah, this yeah. one kid, they tried to say he was like 12 years old. He was like 6'5", 220. He was like a 17-year-old kid, yeah. <laughs> I'm like, dude, nah, he was a 26-year-old grown man. Oh, he was? 6'5", 220? 
Jesus Christ. Dude, come on, man. He out there playing with 12 and 13 year old kids. I can't remember kid. it, but I remember watching Six, some of that. 13 year old kid gunning a ball down there, like he almost 90 miles an hour. Too, yeah. I ain't no 12 year old kid by their mind on register fast enough to hit a 90 mile an hour fastball. Brandon Roy, that's a good call, though, Johnny. Our friend Johnny's. No, but Brandon, and plus, but with Brandon Roy, He's he did through, what, three years in college. Mm hmm. You know, and he has a, didn't he have a hard time developing cartilage too? Isn't that one of his other problems? With I don't his know if he, if he had a hard time developing, but I know he had that meniscus damage. And like you say, they can go in and they can stitch it, and then it, the recovery is longer. Uh, but he didn't do can, that, did he? They went in and snipped it, but then the recovery is shorter. It's like way shorter, and you back on the court playing. But it depends on like how fast Ooh. your body is breaking that remainder down, right? You know, is that saying? like with Dwayne Wade when he got his kneecap removed in two thousand two, so he could be strong for the draft? Do you remember that? You know, he got his kneecap removed. Seriously, look into it. He did. Yeah, he he's know. got a titanium kneecap now uh-huh. in place. He put it in like two years ago. Yeah. Um, but yeah, he. He got it removed in like 2002 because he had some knee problems, and that was a way faster. It was very experimental at the time. They do not do it anymore because Dwayne Wade, when he was like 30 years old, had arthritis of like a 40 year old in his knee because it was so bad because he had no kneecap. It was like very poorly. But they have to do yet. something now. So what did they do? Did they take the part? Because you got to understand when they do a knee replacement, where your kneecap is at, they actually attach like a piece of rubber piece. I think it was Under something like that. Where the I don't kneecap know. supposed to go, right? But like, they didn't yeah. keep it. They didn't. Instead of repairing is the bone that was there, which even he was like, I should have done it. I should have. I should have listened to the doctor. I the doctor even recommended it and said, I don't think you should do this. It's experimental. It's yeah. a shorter healing time. Because so, you got to yeah. think when you like at that point, right? He's like twenty years and old. And the doctor come to you and say, Okay, we got this thing that we know. You know how it works. You're gonna be out like in your agent in your yeah, year. You're gonna be out the eight to nine months. You know, with this but right that's here. That's when the draft combine. But then is. we have this other procedure where we can do it, and you're only out eight to nine weeks. Maybe six if you you're know, good. Ten weeks at the max. It depends on how your body is responding to it. And you know, they just do it because you'll be ready for the draft. We all have combine. that. We all, you know, we all have that that whole mindset of youth, right? When mm. we're young, we don't think about getting older and, and the problem things can cause. Like I was talking to a friend of mine. The other day, and I was just like, if I knew like half the stuff I know now, as far as like taking care of my body, I would have done it a long time ago. Like after every practice and game, I would have been in the ice bath. You know, so I'd have made sure I was seeing chiropractors and you know doing all that stuff. I agree. But you have the power of youth, right? You feel good, so you don't worry about maintaining anything. Mm-hmm. You just I can get up, I can go. It's just once you you start feeling it, you start wondering. Like now, I wonder, like you know, like what would my body have been at now if I'd have done that kind of stuff back then? You know. Because, I mean, I used to see it in the locker rooms. You see guys with ice and stuff. And I'm like, man, what y'all doing? Uh, and we got ice, you know, fell, and you're like, all right, I'm out. You know, you're just trying <laughs> to get out the West Main, But Well, Grant Hill even said that, too. He said, um, he's like stretching. He's like, because one of the first times when he got injured, uh, he didn't take it seriously. And then he got, he re-injured it again. And then when he went to Phoenix, that's when everything changed for him, right? And when they got him to Phoenix, I remember watching this on Inside the NBA with him. They're like, okay, so what are some of your pre stretches you do before a game? Just show us, like, right here. And he just, like, he just, like, touched his toes and, like, went, like, eh, eh, like stretched his arm out quick on behind the back and then, like, this and, like, that. And he's like, I, have, I don't know, that's about it. I don't even really. Yeah. He's like, I'm 30 years old. I don't, I don't really do it. I never really did it. And then it, they did, like, a fast forward a few months just to show, like, where his progression was. And it showed him basically doing yoga before the game and, like, getting all stretched out and getting all, seeing a chiropractor. And then he was like, I should have been doing this at 22 years old, but yeah. I wouldn't have been able to do it because I wouldn't have listened. He said, I would have just drank a Sprite and said, let's go. Yeah. Like, because yeah. like that power of youth, right? You just... That was good for him. He listened finally, though. But anyways, um, we're going to move on, Elvin, to some NBLC news. The Moncton Magic. They had their season opener. It's inaugural year for them. They didn't have that many people there last night. It's estimated to be around 500 people. Should people be concerned? Is there a big red button that they need to panic? And Oh, no, oh, no. It's just the first game, man. But it goes back to what I said earlier, right? It's not where you put the team. It's the marketing. Ah, you just... have to get out in the community. You have to. It's not about, like, where you put the team. To be honest with you, teams in bigger cities has a harder time attracting fans because there's so much to do there, right? Mm-hmm. Like That's why when people suggest, oh, maybe they should put a team up around Toronto. No, Mm-mm. it's too much nightlife. They'll it's go too see much the Raptors. Go they'll go see the Raptors, stuff or like that. Or if they'll do that, they'll go see the Mississippi, you know? like the 905. So. But when you say be a part of the community, they just got to hit every school then, right? 
go to schools, you know, have stuff where the people can interact with the players. You know, like them. don't have it to where the only time they see that player is when he's on the court. Because mm. to be honest with you, if you see me on the court, I'm I'm in work zone. I'm kill in, mode. I mean, yeah, call. you're in kill mode. So it's not a bad you're, thing. You're, no, you're out there. They're gonna see, you know, the the passion. They're gonna see this and that. They don't they don't get to meet and see, you know, once they sit and they talk with you or they get a chance to, you know, shake hands, have a couple of minute conversation, then they understand like, hey, this dude's a really nice guy. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like when the fans get to interact with the players like that, that's what brings them because now they're not just supporting, you know, Ethan the basketball player. They might I'm supporting Ethan the person and Ethan the basketball player. You know, they like, see the both sides of the yeah, coin. Yeah, they see both sides of it, man. So it's about marketing. You know, you got to get out there and interact and, you know, with the fans and all. I agree. I think in a perfect world, we would all want them to have a filled up, sold out stadium. It comes with time. I think that's a bit, not a humbling experience. It is a humbling experience, but it's also, it's a very big learning experience because they have only anywhere to go but up from here. They can just keep trying to get more involved. Getting the fans in the seats is going to come. I think the one thing the NBLC needs to do that's really important would be doing a higher quality cameras. The streams are getting pretty good. I was watching some of the streams last night. They're not bad. I feel like they can always up the quality there too and have the ability so it doesn't lag out on you too much, but that's coming with time. Mm -hmm. It's a lot better from when they first started doing the live streams. When they first started doing the live streams, it would crash out quite frequently and it kind of sucked. Now you're still able to see the whole game. And I think the next step for them is, I think that's the first step. They wanted to have no one be able to crash out or very little people crashing out throughout the whole game. And that's maybe why they have to keep the quality lower so they can do that. And then I think from there, they just need to get their server strength up, but that's just more technical stuff. But anyways, there's still time to build there. My next question is, Elvin. The St. John's Edge rested their arguably their best player, Carl English, the hometown kid, um, former Team Canada representative, played for the University of Hawaii all overseas. He's 36 years old. He didn't play last night. It's the fourth game of the season. They're 3-1. and one. They won last night, but going into the game, there was a few fans concerned because they were resting him. He's 36 now. I don't know how many more years he's got left in him. Let's say he's got two. I think it's a smart move to kind of strategically place it so you have him rest in the beginning a bit. They're starting off on the road. They've had the first four games on the road, so it's kind of rough. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, honestly, I don't see anything wrong with it. You know, he's a like, professional. He probably is not going to be screwing around. Plans. He's like, they don't understand that the guy has done serious time like playing prior to coming here, man, so... You know, you know, shout out, like, good, you know, thumbs up to their coaching staff. I understand it. Like, you know, we got a good player here, but we're not going to run him in the dirt. Very smart approach. You know what I'm saying? Like, we on a groove. They won last night. So, whether he played or not, it didn't really, you know, really matter or not. So Hindsight, it's all per- – everything's perfectly fine. Yeah, if they lost, I think that's what everyone would be well, saying. Is why didn't they, play? They, but they anyways. Won. You know, they won. Like, that shows the strength of their is, unit. What it is is that guy is listening to his body. He knows his body, and he has a good coaching staff that – trust his judge or trust you know what I'm saying what he's saying and and they go on with that is there a part of him have you ever had that happen to you a I guess where they wanted to rest you and b is there a part of him that didn't want the rest the player that's just like no I got you gotta play man why are you resting play 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 no, I mean you don't have many years but left. it just depends like like you know your body right that's when it comes to the self-discipline man. you know you know in theory I'm not a hundred percent well, I need to, you know, I'm not going to be yeah. 100%. Okay, but then you go out there and not 100% and still tear something or mess mm. something up, and then you're done right then. You get True. what I'm saying? Like, you know, sometimes your body, you know, your body talks to you. You just have to listen to it, man. So you never know. He might have came in the first three games and logged in serious minutes. True. You know, gritted it out, playing. He feel, you know, oh, I might need to sit this your one out. Your road games, out. too. Yeah, I might need to sit this one out right here. When you're a vet and you're a respected vet on your team, the young player's not going to really question too much, you know, mm-hmm. especially when you're that gritty, you're that bulldog. Like, they know that when war goes on, you down in the trenches with them going just as hard. They're not going to question stuff like that. Like, they get it. Like and that's kind of good from a young player standpoint in that if they're thinking, oh, well, if I'm here for a few years and I'm around his age when I'm playing – this coach is, is smart. He takes care of his players. He doesn't push them and ride them to the bone kind of thing, which 
is definitely a good thing because you don't want St. John's going, well, no, you're our best player. We got to ride you out, man. We're paying you the big bucks to be a big performer. You got to go, 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 go. Yeah. I mean, uh, but that's, that's just a good thing for them. You know, that's a good look for the organization, number one, you know, because they'll always be able to go and get – I mean, if they keep down that road, they'll always have no problem getting legit veteran players. You get what I'm saying? Uh, so, yeah, just – you know, like I say, he sat out and his team still pulled together and won, which looks which is great for the organization. Looks very right? good. That when you're one of your top players can sit, team too. can sit out and your other younger guys come right in and, and can carry that load and that's always a great thing. So I agree. I agree. I mean and, and we was talking earlier about these road trips. I mean, in the first four games on the road you're three and one. That's hell yeah. That's good. Dude, that is very two good. and two would have been awesome too, but that's yeah. that's where you want to be. One. Three and one, yeah. bam. But anyways, I'm going to the Lightning game this Sunday. Yeah. They're playing – Windsor, is it? Is it Windsor or is it the Halifax? No, yeah, it is Windsor because their first game was against the Rain Man, wasn't it? No, their first game was against Niagara. Um, Niagara, yeah. Either way, more info to come. I'm going to be going Sunday. It's going to be a good time. Um, that's it for our show, though, for today. We just have – well, we have one sponsor to get out of the way first, Alvin. Yeah, man, just go down to Cherry Hill. You want to get your hair cut, get a nice little shave, go down and holler at Juan Carrizo. He calls himself, not because he's playing ball, he calls himself Lawan James. So Is he the one you are? Yeah, so, man, just go holler at him down at Cherry Hill. He'll put you in the game. You can text him at 519-719-5721. Elvin, there's no snow, but either way, you still might have leaves you want to get removed, and the snow will be there. Don't you worry. If so... I want you to call my little brother, Seth. You can call him at 519-532-0076. They'll hook you up. It's perennial landscaping with one P. They'll remove your snow for you. They'll remove the leaves. Take a tree out. Put a deck in. Just contact him. He'll help you out. He'll put you in the books, too. But anyways, he'll put you in the game. Anyways. Everybody have themselves a wonderful day. We'll see you Sunday. All right, man. I know you didn't choose the cards you was dealt. I hope you're moving on and feeling better about yourself. I show you how to move in a room full of vultures. I show you how to move in a room full of vultures. I know you didn't choose the cards you was dealt. I hope you're moving on and feeling better about yourself. I show you how to move in a room full of vultures. I show you how to move in a room full of vultures. Why they hating been aggravated for so long? Steady casting stones as I continue to roll on. Baby, you the best, that's so far gone. I got no one to call on, can't let bygones be bygones. I'm half back, playing time waste I'm Johnny Depp in the ninth gate I put you in my mind state I'm all right, your mans can't concentrate Study the moves they make Every card I'm playing, he is high stakes Know when to hold them in, know when to fold them In a room full of snakes, eyeball them bread on your plate And though I focus on the Lord's will I'm steady dancing on the devil's heels It's in my ear, let's make a deal Illuminati, want my mind, soul, and my body I trade it all for a new Bugatti A good dude with good qualities Look how far I got it me, trying to make it out the game and trying to win the lottery. I know you didn't choose the cards you was dealt. I hope you're moving on and feeling better about yourself. I show you how to move in a room full of vultures. I show you how to move in a room full of vultures. I know you didn't choose the cards you was dealt. I hope you're moving on and feeling better about yourself. I show you how to move in a room full of vultures. I show you how to move in a room full of vultures. Show you how to move to get through the street struggle. It's like I'm lifting weights but ain't gaining no muscle. Every day you hustle, want cream to escalate. Mom, do. Won't nominate Cause she can't tolerate Is it hate or fate? Me and the devil Got a date at eight To crush dreams Plan schemes And run from Jake Soon to be Sold out tapes Unlimited pips If Kiss and Don P Barefooted we crush grapes Superheroes rocking capes Coach yes Baking them cakes Mortgages with high rates Bets with high stakes Everybody got a soul But not everybody got love 
some cities might be safe, but every city got a thug. If you're hiding from the feds, all of your phones got a bug. Can't even trust your own blood when it's down to do or die. They look you in the eye, tell you a white lie. Life is crisscross, and there's always a witness. Your own mother could have your name on the hit list. Stay strong inside, you will survive. Keep them eyes open wide with herb to get you fried. My lyrics blew up the world, and everybody just died. Kiss taking you on a ride like I was an exhibition. You want more? Make a decision at intermission. Rap song submissions, MC collisions. Kiss from CT with that 3D vision. I know you didn't choose the cards you yeah. was dealt. I hope you're moving on and feeling better about yourself. I show you how to move in a room full of vultures. I show you how to move in a room full of vultures. I know you didn't choose the cards you was dealt. I hope you're moving on and feeling better about yourself. I show you how to move in a room full of vultures. I show you how to move in a room full of vultures. You know, when Augusta Joy likes to shine shoes, on the steps of a radio station WRDW, I think we started at three cents, and we went to five, six, never did get to a dime. But today, I own that radio station. It was all this game. I used to read the source and slam. Saved up my wines, lost a couple grand. Yo, I'm thinking of a master plan to make loot. Call up Eric B, give him, pay them full too. Um, I'm Denzel with them two guns drilled. Shoot, my book of rhymes is penned by Sun Tzu. The money on my mind, my lady attend to. But I continue picking up dimes, it's desperate times. Man, I feel like Poseidon, I've been riding the way. Saying what I gotta say to get my brothers paid. Hey, hey, the king always roll with the bishop. They know the rap game is very religious. It's God is my witness. My brothers keep killing it. Y'all keep feeling it. Chris Dow spilling it two years ago. A friend of mine told me Alice and Chris Dow blows your mind. Hey, 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 show me the money. Hey, 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 show me the money. Hey, 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 show me the money. I'm on my Cuban good and did it when they said I wouldn't. Hey, 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 show me the money. Hey, 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 show me the money. Hey, 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 show me the money I'm on my Cuban good and did it when I said I wouldn't uh. I came back off the champagne Later on, I'll tell you my real name But for now, it's Kip for short Kill it for short, the dress is too short You nasty like too short No, I'm a hustler, yeah, I always eat good New house in the woods, new shoe on my foot Who running the game? I'm thinking I could She said to hit her up, I'm thinking maybe I should now y'all wanna be pop icons on your dot com Stuntin' like you pop down and living with your pop smile You are not a rapper just because you put a mic on Like you are not a blogger just because you bought an icon I hate to crush your dreams, but it all ain't what it seems The people highest up got the lowest self-esteem The prettiest people do the ugliest things On the roads to riches and diamond rings Hey, 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 show me the money Hey, 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 show me the money Hey, 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 show me the money. I'm on my Cuban good and did it when they said I wouldn't. Uh, hey, 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 show me the money. Hey, 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 show me the money. Hey, 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 show me the money. I'm on my Cuban good and did it when they said I wouldn't. Uh, I came home, got the Chevy, couldn't grab a rose. 
All the ends I know Turn up their nose You ain't that kid that we used to know Studios and bungalows I got them dreams you can't afford These rappers sell they suck For a little taste of fame I'm Sam Jackson switching lanes Got the bogeys in the hood Saying we feeling your man Young kid, that's a lil name Michael Barris, the government Rapper ladies, a covenant place Nothing above that shit Change because I wanted it Changes for the better K.I.B. for Vendetta Leave a hole up in your sweater Another black boy, get up I swear this is a setup The system won't let up Y'all, the system won't let up All the J's give us a heads up We possession rolling, holding The blocks expose our stars Like my boy Lamar Odom The man's feeding us poison No voices, no choices The blacks get exploited For all y'all enjoyment Hey, 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 hey Show me the money Hey, 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 show me the money. Hey, 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 show me the money. I'm on my Cuban good and did it when it's done.